we've learned previously that by i mean simply characterization via characterization you can identify an organic compound easily right that is by going through its physical properties or by its chemical properties you can simply uh, characterize your compound right so uh, now if we are looking towards enantiomers nowadays we are talking about enantiomers which are non superimposable mirror images of one another so uh, if you simply uh, say that they are non superimposable mirror images of one another then relying on only that one fact you, we can decide that in that simply that enantiomers are different compounds but now here the question arises in what sense they are different in what sense they are different this is a very important question does they match with diastereomers or constitution isomers or what is again a question what is a diastereomer or diastereomer so it's a simply a stereoisomer that is simply what you must know so diastereomers are simply stereoisomers that are not mirror images of one another right so either they are constitutional isomers or diastereomers as well we are talking about so possessing what difference in their boiling points melting points densities refractive index i mean these are all the physical aspects physical aspects in which you can i mean simply characterize the compound that whether they are uh, having such uh, properties answer to this is no a very big no 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 as simply in antimers hold identical melting point identical boiling points ref identical refractive same identical refractive indexes right and of course the the same index uh, same irs ir spectras and uh, with what type of compounds with a chiral compounds now in my previous lectures i've explained you what are chiral and what are a chiral compounds i'm professor dr mohin after mughal from dr M Kazi, Institute of Chemistry, University of Sindh, Jamshoro, and I'm very much here again with a very interesting uh, physical property of um, our enantiomers called optical activity. What is optical activity? It's a very important topic, and it's a very interesting topic. I hope you will like it. For that sense, let's check out the boiling point, or density, refractive index, and uh, many other aspects of uh, R and S2 butanol enantiomers right now in my previous lectures I have explained you what is an R enantiomer what is an S enantiomer R stands for rectus and and S stands for sensitor right sinister okay so now simply as if you go back to the boiling points if you compare the boiling points of R uh, butanol and S butanol they have the same boiling point that is 99.5 degrees Celsius whereas their densities in grams per M ml at uh, 20 degrees uh, centigrade is uh, almost zero 0.808 and uh, both the enantiomers that is the R enantiomer and the S enantiomer they hold the same uh, densities right whereas their refractive index is all at 20 degrees Celsius it's uh, 1.397 for both the R and S2 butanol the other example besides um, two butanol is uh, because uh, up to now I've been uh, coding two butanol as my favorite compound it is my favorite compound. So, uh, besides uh, R and S2 butanol, there is another compound called lactic acid. Now, it has again, you can simply see it holds the similar melting points, and that is almost 53 uh, degrees Celsius. It has 53 degrees Celsius melting point, and um, it has a formula CH3CH OHC double C double. Uh, OH right so now the question arises a very important question is here right and that is uh, if a pair of enantiomer have have multiple identical properties how can we differentiate or di or distinguish one enantiomer uh, or the two enantiomers right how you are going to differentiate between the two enantiomers what could be the way to find out or the differences between the two R and S enantiomers how you are going to find out what what would be the uh, I mean the um, way to uh, to find out what would, is the solution, how you're going to distinguish between an RNS and enantiomer. So uh, it's simply very easy. The question um, is very interesting, and the answer to this is that that the enantiomer and its um, uh, and the molecule and its enantiomer is simply differentiated by their behavior towards the plane polarized light. Plane polarized light. This is a very new term again, but uh, a very interesting one that what how do both the enantiomers they behave uh towards uh i mean uh, when they come across a plane 
So now what is optical activity? As I've just mentioned earlier, that it is simply, um, you can say a compound that rotates the, rotate the plane of polarized light. Uh, it's called optically active. A compound that can rotate plane of polarized light is called optically active compound, right? Now, uh, there are many new terms here that what is, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, rotation or how it does it rotates or how does this whole phenomenon goes on or how you are, who you can uh, simply uh, find out, uh, I mean, um, that, uh, I mean, oh, oh, different aspects about your compound using a typical device called polarimeter, right? This is how you can uh, measure the optical activity of your compound by a device called polarimeter, right? And uh, you fill your reference compound and then of course your compound that to be analyzed um which is uh, optically active and it was going to give it will give you a different result of whereas when you will uh you are going to uh, fill it with an in, uh, inactive optically inactive compound it's, it will come up with different results so what are those let's discuss that now before jumping to that we must we need to learn what is a plane polarized light now light is a wave motion right it is a wave motion or an electromagnetic phenomenon consisting of uh, swinging that is swinging or oscillating that is um, perpendicular fields or you simply can call it um, oscillation of electric field of ordinary light happens in all the planes in all different planes they have different planes it goes in all different planes right uh, and that is of course uh, perpendicular to the direction um, of propagation as i will show you in one of the figures right now ordinary light has uh, electric field that uh, propagates or that uh, moves in all possible different planes now what are they, those planes how does they look like i will just show you in a minute so this is an oscillating electric field right and this is also a direction of uh, propagation of the wave right this is the direction of the wave now what is happening here that as it is an oscillating electric field now as you know that ordinary light happens in all the planes ordinary light it happens in all the planes so what is going to happen here what the viewer is going to see he's going to observe would be the end on view of planes of the oscillations these would be like this simply as i just said in all the directions or in all the planes as we are just talking about the ordinary light right now how it goes on simply it has electric field that is oscillating in all the possible uh, these uh, planes now here for our convenience for my convenience i've shown only the four planes only four planes i've shown here so uh, now as i've just explained that ordinary light it happens in all the planes now you can see here all the planes right so as perpendicular to the and what is what are these these are perpendicular to the direction of propagations as uh, you have seen in the uh, this figure that they are perpendicular to the direction of their propagation the way they are propagating as it is wave it is and thus the same is applied for the magnetic field whereas uh, when the light that oscillates in only one plane is called the plane polarized light the light that oscillates in only one plane is called simply called plane polarized plane polarized light is called plane polarized light when it oscillates in only one plane and what does that look like let let me show you right now it looks like something like that my drawing is not that good but i can at least explain you people what i meant so this is it 
This is simply when the where if you compare it with a plain polarized light, well how it's going to propagate? It will propagate like this, 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 and this. And then what will happen? What the viewer will see? What we, he will observe here is simply that's it. And what is this? This is called the axis of polarization. Axis of polarization now uh, simply it is in the, now you have seen here that in the plane uh, this is the plane polarized light uh, the, the oscillating electric field is only limited to single plane where which defines or which explains its axis of polarization it tells us the axis of its polarization question arises how all these things uh, can be done there would be an instrument, there would be some, I mean, uh, thing, uh, uh, something to measure, uh, how to measure all this, you know, optical activity. So the device called uh, polarimeter is uh, simply uh, the device that can, uh, I mean, uh, uh, tell you the act optical activity of uh, our compound, right? And now here, what is happening here is done simply with a polarizer when simply ordinary light passes through it it interacts with the electric field whereas the polarizer used mostly is a nicol prism right a nicol prism prism is used um as a polarizer and the device is called of course as i just mentioned polarimeter and it is used to measure the effect um, the compound uh, will have that that are simply on the compounds that are optically active that is on the uh, plain polarized light so show you how you can determine the optical rotation in a simple um, polarimeter so if this is an end on view and on view right so here what is simply happening with light waves like this right this is a first polarizer this is the first polarizer right and if it passes through this right now this is the place where you can put the optically active or optically inactive compound now in the our case we'll put the reference compound that is that would be optically inactive and this from here it's open this end is open here okay so it would be something like that this is now your analyzer analyzer right so now what is simply happening here um, this is a simply ordinary light This is simply, uh, this is a, this is the you can see a tube of polarimeter and it is filled with an uh, optically inactive compound. Now here, if you have an optically inactive compound, optically, I will write it down for my viewers inactive compound. This is our first case. If you fill this this much chamber from with an optically inactive compound, and uh, what is going to happen? Or you can simply, uh, if you, you can fill it with an optically inactive or you can leave it empty. The axis of the plane polarized light and analyzer would be parallel. Now, what is happening here? That here. This would be like that. And 
this is simply as this is a this is a polarized light here right this is a polarized light and here again now what is happening here that simply uh, you are simply we are now this is the reference condition of that is the you will have a zero rotation you will get a zero uh, rotation would be formed and you will see a, uh, the viewer is going to see a dark field over here right because the polarization plane is unaffected it will not affect it now uh, as i've just mentioned that if you simply uh, fill it with a inactive compound or an uh, empty leave it empty the axis of the plane a polarized light and the analyzer would be parallel and the instru instrument will give you zero uh, reading right it will give you a zero reading that is over here will have a zero reading over here right this is a um, simply this is a uh, this is simply a polarized light right which i have just mentioned but i draw it for you polarized light this is a polarized light so now here what is happening here that polarization plane is unaffected as for example i just make it here how you will see it it would be unaffected would be like this right that is polar polarizing plane is not disturbed and what you are going to see in the end the viewer i mean is what going to see he's going to see he's going to observe a he's going to observe nothing but a dark field as no light passes through dark field dark field will be observed where so now next the polarized light is passed through and optically what will happen um, if you have an optically active substance now this was optically inactive right this was inactive so you got this result right uh, whereas uh, um, and you have seen that the maximum amount of light is not passing through so till the observed uh, till what will be the observed by the viewer whereas if the polarimeter has an optically active uh, compound rotation of plane polarized light will be observed now there would be a rotation either in the uh, it will the, it will be rotated to the left or to the right in the reading will be towards the left uh, I mean uh, uh, numbers or the right numbers right uh, so the movement would be either towards right or left uh, next here is an ordinary light here right uh, if this is an end-on view this is an uh, uh, ordinary light simply it propagates it again all directions So this was an ordinary light. Right. Okay. So this is again a polarizer. It's a polarizer and the next one is an analyzer. Analyzer. It's an analyzer. So now what is happening here? that uh, the next what is happening that the polarized light is passing through an optically active compound now we have filled it with an optically uh, active compound uh, and uh, the, uh, we have observed with what would be the rotation observed rotation would be alpha with an observed rotation alpha this would be alpha so
and the analyzer is rotated to, in such a way that it would form the dark field condition again that it, it again it will be having a dark field which i have just shown here uh, and this uh, optical rotation alpha can next case as i've just uh, explained that uh, this is an end on view uh, now here again simply this ordinary light is passed right uh, and you can see this uh, it propagates in all the directions and um, simply um, it will pass through the optically active compound now here this is an optically active uh, sample and the observed rotation would be alpha which i have just explained here the observed rotation would be alpha here and uh, now what is happening the analyzer is rotated now as i've just mentioned to again get the dark feel uh, so the optical rotation alpha will be now be kept in our mind and will be read from the uh, calibrator scale on the analyzer now there is an analyzer in which you uh, which is calibrated and that would be read from that easily now um, this was something very interesting and i think you have uh, uh, you have followed this and this is the dark field that is uh, obtained again after it's been rotated right rotated to what rotated at the, rotated this analyzer analyzer to uh, at what angle by an alpha alpha that is alpha equals to alpha equals to optical rotation rotation so you got a Again, the viewer is going to see a dark field. Dark field will be observed. So, and you always remember, keep this in mind that the observed, the whatever the rotation is, it is always reported in the degrees. Um, and um, and the, of course, the dimensions are degrees, mLs, grams, inverse, decimeter inverse. So, um, this was something, uh, you know, about how the polarimeter, it works. Now, how you are going to measure the optical activities of enantiomers, I will explain you in my next session. I hope you have uh, found this uh, figure interesting and you have seen the working principle of polarimeter that how it works and, and how the analyzer and what is the difference between a polarizer and analyzers basically. Uh, simply, you have seen here easily that um, it, we have measured uh, the the optically active compound and an optically inactive compound with a polarimeter and um, and what is simply it is it is basically um, uh, the two polarizers right and the sample is, uh, is even is is uh, evaluated is the sample to be evaluated is placed in the light beam between the two polarizers and um, because you know the optical activity it always varies with wavelength that is color of the light so always that is the monochromatic light that is light of a single color is used to measure the optical activity and that's why we um, use the yellow light that is uh, the sodium d line with the wavelength of 5893 degrees angstrom um, in such type of experiments a very interesting thing that what is optical rotation it is simply uh, the amount of degrees alpha uh, or number of degrees alpha that uh, you can say analyzer must be uh, uh, must be moved to re regain back the dark field and that is called the optical rotation of the sample and the, if the samples it's simply uh, what is happening that if it rotates the plane polarized light to the uh, right direction uh, or clockwise direction the optical rotation uh, will be given a plus sign it will be plus sign a plus sign if it's uh, clockwise if it's clockwise sorry i will write here clockwise if it would be rotated and would be clockwise direction the optical rotation is given a plus sign and uh, such a sample is called dextro rotatory dextro rotatory dextro rotatory which is uh, again a latent word dextro meaning right right and if the sample rotates a plane of polarized light uh, simply to the in the opposite direction that is uh, not in the clockwise anti-clockwise direction the optical rotation is uh, given what uh, it would be assigned a minus sign and you call it what sample is called to be levo rotatory levo rotatory l e v o levo rotatory 
So this is something interesting again. New terms again. It's a late, latent term, and it's called left. Late, levo rotatory means left. So and extra rotatory means right. Right. So, um, so it's simply this optical rotation is uh, simply observed alpha rotation. Uh, observed alpha is equals to alpha seal. Now simply what it is. This is. Um, this is simply an observed optical rotation and it is proportional to the number of uh, optically active molecules uh, present in the light beam. Now, the how much, uh, uh, I mean, uh, particles were there in the light beam, it represents that, right? So, thus, alpha is proportional to both the concentration. C, now what is this alpha equals to? Um, I will just tell you alpha, yes, equals to alpha equals to alpha Cl, where C is the concentration and of the or that a typical optically active compound in the sample and then l is the length of the uh, container in which the sample was there placed right is the length so l is the length l is the length and c is the concentration of that optically active compound so Whereas this constant uh, of proportion, pro proportionality is this one. This alpha is the constant proportion and it is also called specific rotation. Now, these are again, you know, new terms. So that's why I'm not jumping into them, the new specific rotations. What is a specific rotation or what it is? These are again new terms. So I thought that I must uh, discuss these things in my next uh, video because it's getting longer and way too long to understand by again my viewers because my viewers are, you know, not uh, getting the lectures as i have hoped them to be so um i hope you have followed a little bit about this today's lecture how it goes on what is optical activity right and uh, what is a polarimeter what is a plane polarized light what is an ordinary light uh what is what are oscillating electric and magnetic fields and uh, how you can measure the optical activity and uh in which device you measure the optical activity what is the name of that optical act the uh, measuring optical activity device it's called a polarimeter uh, which consists of basically two pol polarizers and uh, a sample is placed in between them, between the light beam of the two um, the polarizers. Uh, so it was something to do with that. I hope you like this video and you will learn from it and you will um, you will definitely get some help. It would be helpful to you. So thank you very much.